Here's my favorite story about the woman who just loved humanity. She loved everybody, all kinds of people. As a matter of fact, she loved people so much she decided she wanted to do something in case anything happened, so she took up first aid. While she was coming home from one of her first aid classes one day, walking down the main street, minding her own business, and suddenly she saw a poor fellow lying in the middle of the street, face down, and people just callously walking back and forth, paying absolutely no attention to him. So she said, oh my goodness, look at that poor man lying there. Here's my chance not only to do a good deed, but to get in a little practice at my first aid. So she rushed over and she started giving him artificial respiration. Well, she worked him for about five minutes, and suddenly she was very gratified to see him raise his head and say, lady, I don't know what you're trying to do, but I'm trying to get a wire down this manhole. <laughs> I'm glad you like that. But now I'd like, to, I'd like to sing a little song for you. A little song which I put together while under the influence of a marshmallow sundae, and I hope it meets with your approval. Professor, if you please. Yes, it's just one of those songs that you hear now and then. You don't know just where and you don't know just when. It's one of those songs that are over again. It's one of those songs that start playing again. Yes, it's one of those songs that you hear for a while that come into fashion and go out of style. It's one of those songs that you think you forgot, but it's one of those songs you cannot because it's one of those songs that can make you recall a ride in the springtime, a walk in the fall, a day in the country, a night in the town, the sun coming up or the rain coming down, or else the evening you parted, the morning you met, and the love of your life you can never forget. The reason is simple, the memory belongs to one of those wonderful, one of those wonderful, one of those wonderful Insight. Stories of spiritual conflict in the 20th century. Insight. Computers are great things. They're reliable, they're efficient, they can do almost anything. But can they ever really take the place of a human being? Isn't there something about you that's unique and special? Something that can't be reproduced in any machine? And isn't there something in you that makes you vastly superior to any machine? If there is, what is it? And how do you activate it? And what is the relationship between you and machines? They can satisfy certain of your needs, but can they satisfy the deepest of them? And who works for whom? I mean, are you for the machine or is the machine for you? Sam. Yeah. How are you, Maggie? Well, how'd the performance go? Oh, all right, I guess. No better? <laughs> no, no better and no worse. The audience was predictable. You tired? Of course I'm tired. I'm only human. You seem to forget that. You can change your batteries in a few minutes. I can. 
Get yourself changed, Sam. Oh, let's not start that again. Oh, I don't mean completely. They could just put in some automatic energy cells. They're not putting anything in and they're not taking anything out. Is that clear? It's clear and it's stupid. Oh, why don't you stop? One simple little operation and you'd never get tired or sick or depressed ever again. And you'd live forever. I don't want to live forever. You should. Well, there's so much to you, so much that we'll miss after you're gone. Qualities that we can't reproduce. Yeah, my heart bleeds for you. You shouldn't begrudge us your talent. Oh, well, what else do I have to begrudge you? Don't be snitty. I'll be snitty if I want to be. Sam, we've been good to you. Good to me? What do you mean, good to me? You've kept me alive over 100 years too long by hook and crook and putting secret potions in my cereal, like an animal in the zoo. Except that in this zoo, there's only one animal, me. One animal in a whole complex of machines, spawning machines that spawn machines that spawn machines. You're not being good to me by keeping me alive, and don't pretend you are. You're just being good to yourselves. But we need you, Sam. Sure. Every civilization needs its freaks, doesn't it? Well, doesn't it? Or say something. React. Pretend you're human for once. Your show must have gone badly, huh? Oh, it isn't that. It just gets to me sometimes. I get so tired of playing the wheels and lights. Well, think of them as people. How can I? You know they're not people. They laugh. Sure, they laugh. And they applaud. Yes, they applaud. Wildly. Oh, sometimes. What more do you want, Sam? I want to be loved. But you are loved. You've been worshipped in some quarters. Then I want to be hated. Well, the drama critics hate you, the purists, the Shakespeare aficionados. I'll tell you what I want. I want there to be just one more human being on this earth, just another human being. Someone to, to, to talk to, to laugh with, to sing with. Uh, somebody that's real. Somebody unpredictable. I'm lonely, Maggie. Well, there were some humans in the Antarctic camp. Perhaps No, they... you mean the rebels. That was a long time ago. They're all gone now. Well, some of them escaped. You know, if you're really lonely, Sam, perhaps they could be found. No, not a chance. They all froze to death. There's nothing out there but ice and snow and emptiness. Nothing. Nothing on this whole earth. Sam? I should have joined them a long time ago. I have an emptiness, too. Well, I guess I will soon enough. I want a baby. Hey, how about this? There was a riot in New Jersey yesterday. Two automatic programmers were bombed. See, things are no different now than they were when humans ran them. So where's your progress? Oh, those were experimental models. They're being redesigned with tighter controls. Uh, listen, Sam, they won't give me a baby without your approval. And here's one. Fifteen information banks demolished. Unless I agree to take one of the experimental models. And I guess this one's my favorite. Mad rapist strikes again. <laughs> Only one parent's consent is necessary to get an experimental model. Oh, they think he has crossed wires. He demolishes his victims first, then rapes the separate parts. Oh, Sam. <laughs> Sam, please. I love it. I hate it. And you know why? Because you're all destroying yourselves. I just hope I can stick around long enough to witness the final holocaust. Sam. Now, what is it now? I've ordered a baby. Yeah, well... You what? You heard me. But you can't. You can't do that without my approval. I've ordered an experimental model. An experimental model? Well, what department of experimentation is it coming from? Weaponry? You gonna ask me to share the house with a baby nuclear warhead? No. Then what? It's from the Department of Arts and Letters. Oh, fine. A bloody intellectual. No. Then what? A painter, an automatic Jackson Pollock? Guess again. I don't want to guess. Oh, you'll love it. No, you'll know I'll never love another computer. This one you will. No, I won't. Yes, you will. No, I won't. <gasps> they want to program it to be an actor, Sam. An actor? How could they? Why, that's why they've been studying you. It was only a matter of time. Uh-huh. I suppose so. 
Well, I guess this is the end. Oh, don't be silly. It's going to phase me out. You don't understand. You put me out to pasture. Oh, not at all, Sam. You're to teach at your act. All the refinements. Never. Sam. Never. I won't have another whirring, buzzing, clicking, flashing computer in this house, do you hear? I'll move out. I'll turn you in. I'll... You can't. I'll kill you. <laughs> what a lyrical idea. I'll smash you to pieces. You can't, Sam. I won't put up you with a little You know you can't. Sam. I won't have any. No. No. Oh. 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 Sam. Who's that? There is no need to panic, Sam. Where are you? We'll be with you in a minute. The truck is turning into your street truck? right now. No, no, I won't go. I won't go. Of course you will. <laughs> Sam. You know better than that, Sam. Sit down, Sam. Sit down. Sam, to murder your wife is one thing, a misdemeanor. A wife can always be patched up or replaced. But to refuse to give information to the Central Information Bank that's very serious, Sam. That's a felony. So hang me. We would rather convince you to give us the information we need. Not a chance. We are a compendium of all information. All but mine. This is childish defiance, Sam. What's it for? What's it prove? It proves that you'll never program a computer with my act. But we are. One way or another, eventually we will. No. No. I'll die first. Yeah. Then, when you die, we'll simply transplant your brain into a body computer and record you. All right. All right. Take my brain. But you'll never get my feelings. You'll never get my emotions. You'll never get the real me. Please, Sam. Not oh, so loud. You hear me? Lower your no. volume two decibels at once. No, you Sam, won't. we are going to get your act. You want my act? All right, here it is. Far is Sam. Sam, lower your volume. Sam, lower your volume.
as I foretold you, are all spirits and have melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of our vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. Be dimmed the noontide sun, called forth the multitudinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azure vault set roaring war. Graves by my command have waked their sleepers, hoped and let them forth by my so potent art. This rough magic I hear adjure. I'll break my staff, I'll drown my book. Sam, come home. You've been away too long. You must be hungry. There's a nice steak waiting for you. We miss you, Sam. There'll be no more questions. No more pressures. Just go back to Maggie. Never. Never. She loves you, Sam. So do we. We'll find you anyway. before I go back. Mister. Hey, mister. Who are you? I don't know. Well, don't you have a name? I don't think so. How did you get in here? I don't know. I was so cold. It's warm here. Where did you come from? A long way. Don't lie to me! Lying. You're a computer dressed as a little boy, aren't you? Answer me. I don't want to make you angry. Why not? I don't know. I'm lonely. What do you know? Not much. Yeah, but say that again. Not much. What do you think you are, a comedian? Are you a comedian? There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Where did you learn that? I don't know. I just know it. Well, you've got to remember where you learned it. Where did you learn it? I... Where? I don't remember. I'm an old man. My memory's not what it was. Now, it's not important where I learned it. I want to know where you learned it. I can't remember either. Come here, boy. You're warm, you're dirty. You smell. I was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. You're as dirty and ragged as I was. You know there were rich people and poor people in those days. Humans? 
Oh, yes. There were humans everywhere. Millions and millions of them. She swallowed that spider to catch that fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Perhaps she'll die. What do you have in your pocket? Some Tootsie Rolls. Want some? Have I done something wrong? No. It's just that I haven't eaten a dirty Tootsie Roll out of a dirty hand in almost a century. There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider. That wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch a fly. And I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. No, no, like this. Perhaps she'll die. Perhaps she'll die. You need a name. I guess I do. Can't go to the central files. They'd only take you away from me. We'll have to think up a name for you. Okay. All right, you pick it this time. And make it a good one, because it's going to be with you for life. What's yours? Sam. Then I'll be Sam, too. Why? There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. Why Sam? I don't know. It just seems like my name. I feel like Sam. Think of that. She swallowed a cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider. That wiggled and wriggled and jiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps, Perhaps she'll so. die. Were there really all those humans when you were little? Oh, yes. And believe it or not, we were afraid there were too many. Before the machines? Oh, yes. How did they all take care of themselves? They didn't. You see, there was air pollution and water pollution and atomic bombs. That's how it all happened. Must have been fun then. Oh, it was. It was fun and it was frightening too. You know what you miss the most? Not knowing. I don't understand. I mean, waking up in the morning and not knowing what the day was going to be like. Whether you were going to have enough to eat, or whether it was going to rain, or if you'd get the job, or be run over on the way to the theater. Did they let you be run over? Oh, there was no they. You could get run over if you wanted to. Or you could meet someone and, and fall in love. Fall in love? Sure, with a girl. You see, Sam, there were two kinds of humans then. There were girls and there were... Oh, never mind. I don't mind. Well, I do. Love's part of our secret. That's what they can never understand. Oh, I mean, they can work it out mathematically. But they can never feel it. Can't know it, ever. See, life was unpredictable. Everything was for the first time. Like a game? Yes, like a game. Ah, it was serious and sometimes sad, but it was always exciting. There was an old lady who swallowed a dog. Why do you want my name? I just do. What a hog she swallowed a dog. But why? Because I like you. We can both be sad, can't we? Big Sam and Little Sam. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. Swallowed the bird to catch the spider. That wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. And I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps, Perhaps she'll die. die. Ah, you're something else, Sam. There was an old lady who swallowed a goat. She just opened her throat and swallowed the goat. She swallowed the goat to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. Swallowed the bird to catch the spider. That wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. That's good. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a horse. She's dead. All of a sudden, I want to live. Why? Because I have to. There's so much to teach you. You don't have to. Oh, yes, I do. And I want to do it fast, wonderfully fast. But why? Because now it's fun. Come on. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. 
There was an old lady who swallowed a spider. I don't know why she swallowed a spider. I'm sorry. Forgive me? Not on your life. I brought you a present. A present? A fine present. What is it? Yes. Tell me. Oh, it's a present you love. I won't. Yes, you will. No, I won't. Yes, you will. It's a child. Believe it or not, his name is Sam. Oh, bring him over to me. Closer. He's the one. He's the one I ordered. The very one. What's he made of, Maggie? Oh, the usual, with a covering of Dacron foam rubber. But he smells like a boy. A simple matter of chemicals. There was dirt in his cuffs, Tootsie Rolls in his pockets. It was very simple, Sam. But he knew the song. They've read all the books. They know exactly what to prepare. Tails, have been any better? Why, it doesn't matter what I'm made of. I love you. I need you. Isn't that enough? No. No, it's not. You're programmed to love me. You can't really love me. Because you're not human. You're not real. Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>